In 17th century Italy, young Benedetta Carlini is enrolled by her parents in a Theatine convent run by Abbas Felicita, to become a nun. 18 years later, while playing the Virgin Mary in a play, Benedetta has a vision of Jesus calling to her. One day, a young peasant woman named Bartolomea seeks shelter from her abusive father in the convent. Benedetta is assigned to oversee Bartolomea's integration into convent life. That night, Bartolomea kisses Benedetta. Benedetta begins to have recurring visions of Jesus. After a particularly fraught vision, where a man she mistakes for Jesus saves her from being gang raped, Benedetta falls into a severe illness. Abbas Felicita assigns Bartolomea to look after her. Benedetta has another vision of Christ asking her to undress and touch his hands. The following day, she wakes up with stigmata on her palms and feet. An investigation ensues. Abbas Felicita is skeptical because Benedetta's stigmata manifested. At the same time, she was asleep, not during prayer, and her forehead lacked the marks of a crown of thorns. Sister Christina, Felicita's daughter, suspects that Benedetta's wounds are self-inflicted after spotting a nearby pottery shard. Following a dispute between Felicita and local church leaders about how widespread interest in Benedetta's visions should be handled, Benedetta is elevated to the position of abbess in place of Felicita. Benedetta and Bartolomea move into Felicita's old quarters and begin a sexual relationship, later using a toy carved by Bartolomea out of Benedetta's wooden Virgin Mary statuette. In confession, Christina tells the priest that she witnessed Benedetta inflicting her forehead wounds. The next day, the priest compels Christina to say her accusations publicly. When questioned by the priest, Felicita refutes Christina's claims because Christina has previously admitted to her that she did not actually see the wounds being self-inflicted. Apparently possessed by the spirit of Jesus, Benedetta orders Christina to flagellate herself. Felicita later observes Benedetta and Bartolomea making love through a peephole in their chambers. Humiliated, Christina jumps to her death from the roof of the convent. As a plague begins to ravage the countryside, Benedetta has a vision that Pesha will be spared and orders the abbey closed to prevent infection. Felicita secretly travels to Florence to report Benedetta's sexual indiscretions to the local papal nuncio. Meanwhile, Benedetta suddenly dies of unknown causes. After Felicita returns to the abbey with the nuncio, Benedetta revives, saying she is in heaven and has seen the fates of all those present. As a representative of the Pope, the nuncio opens a court of inquiry into Benedetta's conduct. Bartolomea initially denies any sexual involvement with Benedetta. Still, after being tortured by the nuncio's men, she ultimately confesses the truth, leading the nuncio to the wooden love toy hidden in a Bible. He has Benedetta arrested, speaking in a male voice again, she lashes out at those who persecute her, announcing that the nuncio will soon fall ill. The nuncio discovers that Felicita has the plague and orders her condition to be hidden. Bartolomea is expelled from the abbey. In the town square, before she is to be executed, Benedetta reveals new stigmata and, speaking in a male voice, announces that the angel of death approaches. In revealing her disease, Felicita blames the nuncio for bringing the plague to Pesha. Chaos ensues as the townspeople prevent the nuncio's men from burning Benedetta at the stake. Bartolomea unties Benedetta, discovering a bloody potsherd at her feet. The nuncio is killed by an angry mob, Benedetta and Bartolomea flee the town, and Felicita self-immolates on the fire lit for Benedetta's execution. In an abandoned stable outside of town, after spending the night with Bartolomea, Benedetta insists that she must return to the convent. Bartolomea begs her to stay and tries to get her to admit that she faked her stigmata. Still, Benedetta refuses and instead heads back toward Pesha. A title card reveals that Benedetta lived in the abbey until her death at 70 and that the plague spared Pesha.